I'm just going to hop into the tournament. This is a monthly rapid arena. Five hour tournament, joining about halfway through. Almost 3,000 players. So yeah, the plan today is to hopefully play some instructive rapid chess, maybe some berserking blitz chess, a uh, double berserking game here. Do I start with a Stafford? Let's play a Stafford or let's play a, against a Danish or a center game or a transposed scotch. Bishop c4. Okay, tricky move order. Maybe we'll see a Nachmanson. What do we call this? It's like almost a Max Ling. This is supposed to be like very fine for black. Um, it's a big trade. I'm up a pawn. And even though I lost a G pawn, uh, I think it's okay. I have very strong pawns in the center, controlling space. I just want to play this. I would like to queenside castle eventually. I think bishop e6 is fine. Like if knight g5, I'm thinking queen d5. And then takes, takes. And eventually I'll castle, enjoy the center. Yeah, queen d5 looks pretty nice. There are like similar but slightly different lines where white can put on more pressure in this sort of structure, but I think already it's uh it's looking good for black, like c3. It does allow knight c4, but then I'll castle. Free queen on move five. Did I miss something? This queen has been pretty safe. But maybe in some alternate universe. Yeah, the plan going forward from here is to use a G file, probably target G2. I'll put a rook on G8. Oh, Poca Cola caught my videos on the replay channel. Maybe referring to the extra channel on YouTube. Watch everything for the last two years. Nice. Yeah, I do post a longer forum, usually full streams on the extra channel, and then post other videos on the main channel. Mainly been recaps and speedrun content recently. Okay, we see G3. So, yeah, white doesn't have a light square bishop, which means these light squares are extra weak. I was thinking bishop h3, but actually bishop g4 seems to just win material. The knight's pinned and attacked twice. I guess there is king g2, which walks into the knight getting like double pinned, but it does defend the knight. Yeah, if king g2, what do I do? h5 I would like to rook lift maybe king g2 queen f5 uh, setting up bishop h3 also preventing pawn h3 yeah pretty difficult position for white a5 is played white's trying to attack but uh Black's attack is a little bit faster. Okay, let's set up some mating idea. I'm going to play queen h5. The plan is to play rook d5 and then sack my queen for mate. I guess I'm also threatening this, but... Okay, a6. I'll allow the capture on b7. Oh, I have to update the join command. Yeah, that probably links to like a very old tournament. <laughs> Commands, edit, join. We do have the upcoming command, which is updated. 
I'm announcing my next two tournaments today. I'll be playing in some classical tournaments in July and August. Maybe I'll share I'll share, I'll share more info after this game. Um, now, yeah, now it looks like it's made in three. It's a very typical mating idea. Oh no, my queen. And this was a plan from back when I played queen h5 is to yeah, eventually check me in on h1. Okay, a nice game to start the stream. Yeah, I'll say that like generally in this line, it's better for white not to take the knight, but to play bishop b5. And then usually it goes knight e4, knight takes d4, and things are a bit more controlled for white here. Like bishop d7 takes, takes, and then white can develop and usually uh, either f3 or f4 later reinforce the pawn. So um, yeah, before I join the next game, uh, I will be playing two tournaments coming up. One is in Beale. Uh, it's a Beale chess festival, which I played last year. Really excited to play again this year. It's from July 13 through 26. And then the other one is a new tournament for me. It'll be in Trondheim, Norway. It's called the Lewis Chess Legends um, tournament. And there's some history with, I think they discovered like very old chess pieces in Norway, dating back to somewhere in the 1800s. Uh, that will be August 6th through 14th. And both events are nine round classical events with GM norms possible. Uh, in Trondheim, I think there's some big names. There's Anna, or there's not Anna Kramling, uh, Pia Kramling, um, and her husband, Juan Bayon. And then there's also Hammer who's playing in it. So a lot to look forward to. More information is in the links in the chat. Um, they're all, they're both open events. So for like normal people who just want a chess vacation, it's possible to, to still sign up and play, I think for both of them. Uh, okay, playing right now. as opposed to playing in the future or the past. Let's play a Sicilian. Oh no, not this bug. Hi, Eric and chat. I can't move. Okay. Uh, I don't know why this happens. I'm in Safari. Why is this happening? I can't like access anything on the page. Me chess. That's so weird. This happened before too. Okay. Thankfully I didn't lose by forfeit. I had to like open a different browser just to make my first move. <laughs> I'm on a Mac, I'm using Safari. The reason I use Safari is because there's a weird bug with Chrome. The big five are happy to be here. Thanks for the moves and good luck taking down the hammer. Oh, thank you. DeQ, then welcome back. Happy 50 months. The big five oh. Also, thank you, one clutch spork from earlier. Happy 35 months. Okay, so we have a accelerated dragon. Uh mainline. I'll play rookie eight. This is this is actually one of the moves recommended in the chess mood course on the Accelerated Dragon. We still have the chess mood command too. There's still a few more days to get free access to the site, especially for those that want to learn this opening. They have, I think they have at least a few dozen hours of training just on like these main lines. The point of rookie eight is there's cases where white plays f3 and then black can play e6 d5 and the rook has x-ray vision against a slightly loose bishop on e3. We're also just waiting for white to commit to something. Like white can't play queen d2 immediately because knight g4. If castling, then just d6, preparing knight g4. It's more positional line.
I didn't fully berserk. Um, I burned a little bit of time trying to make my, my first few moves. Okay, I just said white can't play queen d2, but my opponent is trying to prove me wrong. Queen d2 is legal. The problem is once the knight gets access to g4, then if I can get this trade of knight for bishop, then it can be very pleasant. Um, I have to take the knight first. The queen's attacked. A small decision if I take with a B or D pawn. I think I'd rather keep queens on the board. The queen has potential to go to a5. And taking with a B pawn allows for bishop a6. Pierce through white's position. If white saves the bishop, let's say bishop g5, there might be eventual ideas of bishop a6, and then I reroute the knight to e5 and eventually c4. Welcome back, HVL. Nice 27 to see months. you, sir. Yeah, good to see you, too. So we do see bishop g5. I'm looking for tactics. Like queen a5... It looks like a nice move to start with. Like there's castling. I feel like this could get tactical. I'm going to start with queen a5. Wait, queen a5, h3. I don't think I'm really threatening to take on c3. I was wondering about queen a5, threatening knight f2, but then king takes f2. I mean, maybe I'm better off starting with bishop a6. Because h3, knight e5... Maybe a bit nicer to have knight c4 as an option, like if f4. And I prevent white from castling. Yeah, let's go for this. It's one of these cases where I was about to play the first move that came to mind, and then... Take a step back, consider the options. And this just seems a bit more flexible because I know the bishop wanted to go here. And there's maybe some cases where the queen goes to b6. Like now queen b6 does attack f2. Of course, I want to attack on the queen side as well. And queen a5 is still an option. It would maybe threaten knight takes f2 because the queen would be overworked defending this and this. Queen a5 does pressure the bishop. I'm not actually sure. Like, if queen b6, is it actually threatened to take on f2? If white just plays h3, I take and then rook f1. I take and then take. It could get very messy. Feels like it should still be fine, though. Yeah, let's start with this. If h3, I'll decide whether to take or play knight e5. Oh, welcome back to Yes, It's Iris. Um, I did mention the announcements, but we do have the upcoming command. I'm sharing more details to the tournaments I'm playing in July and August. Wow, white plays f3. So now if knight here, there's bishop e3. Interesting. Yeah, that move I kind of forgot about. Okay, so knight e5. And it seems like there's a lot of attacking potential. The prospect of knight c4, rook b8. I mean, there's up to four pieces targeting b2 within just a couple of moves. Of course, the bishop does lock the, the b file. And maybe eventually, like, I can somehow push my a pawn or c pawn. I can analyze after if there were, like, better options earlier. Yeah, bishop e3 co does come with tempo. Yeah, now I'm thinking queen a5. I still do probably want to go for this. 
And that would very likely get me in the bishop pair, because either I take on e3 or white takes here. Bishop d4. And now I'm looking at c5. Also have to keep in mind like the sneaky move. Okay, bishop h6 is not supported now. Yeah, knight c4, I think it just leads to trades, like takes, takes, takes. Well, it might actually blunder, because if takes, there's check, and my bishop hangs. So I think I go for this. And if takes, takes, then, I mean, this is what I want. Get rid of white starks for a bishop, and I keep my own darks for a bishop. So then dark squares are just more easy to target. And if takes takes, I'll be threatening pawn c4 to trap this bishop. And the bishop d5, I just play rook b8. b2 is still a target. Bishop is still maybe stuck with e6 coming. So it's looking, looking pleasant for black. Welcome back, Jonathan Sampson. Good to see you. Something about rooks being berserkers in Trondheim. Not sure if I understand the reference. <laughs> okay, I get the bishop hair. Oh, there's this move. There's also this move. Wait, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, thankfully, I do have check and then e6. I also have takes. Oh, this could get messy. Taking might just win material. Time's getting low, so okay, let's calculate. Takes. If I takes, I play this. There's no more checks. Takes back. C4, then maybe I just take threatening C4, and then what does white do? There's a D5, rook B8. King is surprisingly safe. Let's say H4, C4, H5, I take. That should be fine. I think I just go for this. I mean, this is a safe move, bishop F4. King b1, e6. But, and this just seems much better. Assuming I'm not missing anything. d7 might fall. But these lines, like, takes, takes. If white takes on d7, I check, I win the rook. White's king will be on d2. I'll take on g2 with check. Rook d8 is in the air. And white just has no checks because like f6 is covered. g8 is covered. When the queen comes to c3, I also help defend the diagonal. Sometimes when you play the dragon, you have to be ready for these like tactical fights. You have to judge when your your attacking resources outweighs the opponent's attacking resources. Okay, let's take on c3. C4 is a big threat. I really don't see what white can even try here. I was calculating h4 earlier, but then I play c4, h5, and then I take threatening mate. I just keep initiative. White's a little bit too slow to crash through on the h-file.
oh, I see the link to the the Lewis chess pieces uh, Wikipedia page. Oh, there is a term berserkers. I'll have to maybe show this between games. Do you remember the very first time you played online? Not really. I was probably like seven or eight years old. It was back well before Lee Chess existed. Probably back before chess.com existed. Like the first platform I played on, I think was US Chess Live before it got bought by ICC. There was also the World Chess Network. Okay, so white takes here. Um, I have a choice here. I could play C4. I could also check and then win the thing. C4, I'm liking a bit more. My calculation is C4. If white takes, I just take with bishop and life is good. And if white takes, I take and then take and then take and then take and then rook c8. Diagonal's covered and white can't really defend c2. Queen a1 was probably also winning, but I think this is just cleaner. That move I did not consider. I have this move now, threatening maiden one, abandoning my bishop, but cutting off the d file. I guess white could try king b1, but then I'll take and I'll be up a piece. Yeah, this is probably the best try. Yahoo Chess. I'm not sure if I ever played on Yahoo Chess. They shut down like pretty early in time. White well, plays King B1. Yeah, let's just take the bishop. So if Queen takes, I pin and win. If pawn takes, I checkmate. So this is really the only move. And now, yeah, now probably this move. And there's also this move, which... Oh, but the queen defends b3. Okay, let's go for... Wait a minute. If I play this, there's rook takes a6. Be careful. So maybe I play this. Just save the bishop. I also over defend the rook, so like this rook can mobilize. White wants to hurt me. Now I can play this. My goal is to checkmate in the corner. Thank you, Prince Siller. First time prime. Okay. A pleasant game. I think my opponent went a little bit wrong, like right out of the opening, allowing Knight g4. Like the main moves are f3 and castling. Knight c6 may be also playable. h3 also playable. Thank you, Modern Penguin. Happy 42. S. Terry, welcome back. Happy 25. There's a question what about d6 instead of queen b6? 
Honestly, I didn't consider this move. It's a very typical dragon Hello, move. Eric, hope you're well. Oh, thank you, George and Zola. I hope you're well as well. Happy 16. Yeah, it's true that like white has pressure on the D file, but I was more interested in seizing initiative. Um, and D6 is very often played sometimes to prepare the maneuver like knight d7 to c5 when the knight's here. But in this case, oh wow, engine says white's for choice. I go wrong? Or this is just playable? Oh, this is playable for white. I thought black is already like better here. So bishop a6. I was close to playing queen b6 first, but I thought h3. Maybe it could transpose. Yeah, I really thought the position is just easier for black to play. I guess white does have like some dragon attacking ideas, some Yugoslav ta attacking ideas. Yeah, it seems like queen b6 was fine. Did lose a tempo, but got some initiative. And when I played c5, I just, I was slightly oblivious to the potential tactics with f7. Um, there was a funny line if bishop takes f7, I would take queen d5 hitting this and this, and then the only move to hold on to the bishop is to play king f6. And engine confirms this is like just winning for black. It looks a little bit awkward, but uh, it blocks up a piece. Oh, I had knight d3. Knight d3 is not a move I saw. Very nice idea, though. To obstruct the queen and like cleanly get the bishop pair. But c5 was still, yeah, still fine. And once we got to this, it's like pretty much winning for black. Okay, two games down. I'm actually at my peak rapid rating. I haven't played rapid on Lee Chess in well over a month. Um, but yeah, with every game I win, I'm reaching a new peak. Try and keep it going. Can we see you play live in Switzerland? Yeah, um, last year, all my games were broadcast live on DGT. I assume it will be the same this year as well. Like, very nice tournament. I think it's very likely Jonathan will take over for commentary. Okay, we have a Pierce. Wait. I swear I clicked Berserk. It made the sound, but it didn't, it didn't reduce my time. Oh, no. Okay, we have a modern type thing. Let's play knight c3. Yeah, I usually play this position with a bishop on f4, but the reason why I don't play bishop f4 here is knight d7 and e5. Um, so I think I have to do things a little bit differently with f3. Queen d2. I'll still go for this bishop h6 attacking idea. Yeah, bishop h6 is coming next. Oh, the question was if you can watch in person. Yeah, I'm pretty sure spectators are allowed. Um, I mean, for the classical games, it's probably not the most exciting thing to watch in person, but as far as I remember, they do have like spectator seating. I don't think you're allowed to get so close to the playing area. Like it's kind of roped off, but you can still like be in the playing room. Um, like it's a pretty big ballroom as far as I remember. 
And then there's a bunch of side events too in Beal. There's Rapid, Blitz, Chess 960. I think for those, it's more spectator friendly. And then last year there was live commentary, which I assume they'll do again this year. Live commentary is outside the playing room, but um, it's also something you can watch in person. Anyway, this position looks nice. Hitting the queen, probably attack this thing. I'm controlling f4, so yeah, black retreats. I mean, there's h4, h5. I might just retreat as well. I feel like there's no reason to allow the trade. And the plan is just to play h4, h5, open the file, maybe eventually checkmate. Welcome back, Daniels. Thanks for the bits. Black is threatening to play this and then remove my knight and try and win the pawn. So just defend. Yeah, sometimes you have to be careful as white in these positions. The queen is tied down to the bishop, so just want to make sure my queen is not getting overworked. Yeah, it does seem like the timing, like I, I berserked right when my opponent made the move, so I don't think it reached the server in time. I think this has happened maybe once or twice to me before. I guess I can't complain. I mean, maybe my opponent should complain. <laughs> what to do? Okay, c5, I'll have to play knight b3. I'm actually wondering about knight f5, though. c5, knight f5. Takes and then queen g5, threatening mate. But then there's 98. Oh, but then I win the queen, because 98 obstructs a rook. Black takes on g4. Sacking a piece for two pawns. I think this only helps me like open the position. Like take. Wondering if I can allow the fork, like h5, knight f2, and then take. It looks fine, actually. Because knight f2 my takes, the same takes, age takes. As my nephew Lowell, thank you for the goodly content, Tim Rosen T. Oh, nice. Happy 14 months to your nephew. Welcome back, the Gav. Welcome back, everyone, too. I know my streams have been pretty sporadic in recent times, but uh, you have a few weeks before my travels begin again. Okay, so I gave back some material, but this looks like a pretty strong attack. So black takes on g6, I play queen h6. If black doesn't take on g6, then the pawn is going to have a good time. Thanks for 300 rating points only watching your streams. Oh, thank you, Mikkelger. Keep it up. Happy 34 months. H5 is probably the best try. Now if I take rook h8, I take, I'm still threatening queen h6 check. I'm looking for other options. This should be good enough. 
Yeah, the rook is supported by the bishop. If takes, takes, the bishop supports the pawn. Enables queen g2 check. If king takes f7, then the king's just completely naked. Yeah, now, yeah, now f5, there's bishop f5. But queen g2, king f8, queen g8. Is it force mate? I feel like it should be. Oh wow, is there a line where I promote to knight with mate? King f6, knight d5, king e5, knight f3, king e6, promote to knight. Well, that's not happening. I can show it after the game. Uh, knight f5 is a pork, the pin plus a fork. Yeah, let me show this. Um, assuming I wasn't missing anything, and it wasn't forced by any means, but uh, if king f6, I was looking at knight e5, king e5, knight f3, of course forking, but after king e6, I wouldn't take the queen. I would promote to a knight, and this is checkmate because the knights just work really well together. This knight controls e6 and d7. This knight controls e7 and f6. This knight controls e5. Pawn controls f5. Bishop controls f7. I don't actually need my queen to be mating. Just the knights, the pawn, and the bishop. So, okay, pretty clean game. I made one inaccuracy this game, according to game review, h4. I don't fully understand. Engine wants me to take first and then, ah, g5, f4, okay. Apparently it was stronger. But nice game overall. Uh, oh yeah, I wanted to show my, my rating stats. So, yeah, I need to play more rapid games to appear on the leaderboard. My deviation went up. But I'm currently at my peak rating, 2710. Uh, let's keep it going. 660. Is that a stable mate? Um, yeah, the horses found their, their stable, I guess. Oh, playing obese Reese. Okay. Obese Reese uh, has gotten a few points off me the last few games we played. Let me, uh, did I mess up the layout? I may have. Let's play an Italian. I'll play what I played against uh, Festino Oro, this early A4 move. Castle. Board, geometry, there we go, okay. I will say this line, it's very hard to prepare like all the branches and like very specific detail because there's so many different branches between like a6 and a5 black avoiding it and castling sometimes black will play h6 um but there's a lot of like recurring ideas that can come from these variations so i'll start with knight d2 yeah bishop e6 pretty sure queen e1 Just leave the tension between the bishops. Yeah, I think I have to play rook c1 here. That's the one downside of moving my queen away from my c pawn. c5. Yeah, b5 might be coming. 
Considering knight h4. Is b5 I don't think is playable. I might as well just try and like get the knight to f5. And this is one of the strategies with this um this opening approach is when I played bishop e3 to trade the, the bishops and open f file, then very often in the middle game the knight can try and maneuver, the queen can maneuver, create some attack on the king side. And of course black is gonna try and generate counterplay in the center, maybe on the queen side. I don't want to take the bishop and if the pawn takes, then I don't have the f5 square for the knight. So leaving the tension. Um, now if I play this, there might be d5 to worry about. I'm, I'm wondering about queen g3. Also, this move. Black is maybe tickling the pawn, preparing b5. <laughs> maybe it's worth playing a5. A5, there's queen d8, knight b3. Maybe just abandon the pawn. Let's play a5. It took me like a while to actually realize the pawn was attacked. Okay, now. Oh, now this doesn't work. Maybe now I have to play like rook a1. I could also actually take and play knight c4. Yeah, maybe that's the way to go. And then just try and play very positionally. If pawn takes, then there's going to be four pawns on the e-file. But I have this bind on the queen side. Threatening the fork. The knight no longer really serves a purpose here. Like I probably just want to move back. And the benefit with knight f3 is it does discourage d5 because an e5 would be attacked. But it's very positional now. Queen g3. I'm thinking the plan might just be to double up on the f-file. You know, black might have the same plan. I'm wondering if I can ever like get in d4. Like c3 d4 could be interesting. Like d6 is potentially weak. Looks like yeah, black might be preparing b5 to open the b file. D4 right away, maybe possible. I could play rook a1 too. I'm going to start with rook a1. Because now with b5, I take, take, and take, I think. If knight b4 to attack the pawn, I have rook f2. Rook f6. Thinking c3. Just restricting the knight. This is maybe slightly committal. Okay, we see rook g6, queen h3. I probably won't take a draw. If, we're, if we repeat like rook h6, I probably eventually move to h4 or back to f2. 
Okay, here I have like 92. And I age four. Problem could be d5 though. Yeah, maybe I should have played queen h4 initially. So now queen h4, there's rook takes f3. Play knight d2, d5. This may be still playable. Not thrilled with this. I really just trying to like lessen the pressure on the king side, and trade a pair of rooks. And if takes, then black will have a choice. Maybe I should have taken first. Keeping the tension. Yeah, we'll repeat once. Rook h6, I either take or play queen g4. Time is going to be really, very relevant. Now I think I take. So if queen takes, I uh, I take, take, and then the knight hangs. If knight takes, I have knight b6. Yeah, I think uh, I think this is missed. Although this still might be a move. If I take. To make sure there's no strong counterplay. I think everything's okay though. I think things are finally going in White's favor. It was a very tense position for a while though. I could play queen d5. I mean, this move is also interesting to throw in. Of course, I could take as well. I don't think it makes a huge difference. Just take first. Queen f3, there's queen e8 check. Thank you, Opstoyevsky. Happy two months. Yeah, so white's up a pawn. b7, also e5 are both pretty vulnerable. And the knight is actually, like, it's. It's developed towards the center, but it can't really do much in the position. It's one benefit of having played c3 earlier. Any advice for someone who plays well, but is very bad in the opening? Um, well, thankfully for you, like most games are not determined in the opening. So if you can maybe find openings that are just easy to learn, where you can get like, reasonable positions going into the middle game, uh, that's usually good enough for, for most players. Um, but it really helps to like analyze your games too and see what what exactly is going wrong. Like, are you not developing quickly enough? Are you falling for traps? Do you not know the plans or like what your ideal placement should be for your pieces? 
Um, it's good to be patient and try and take away a lesson from every game. Gradually get stronger. H5 makes Luft. Queen d5. I maybe could have taken the pawn, but I think it's better to focus in the center. Yeah, we could trade queens. Queen e4 is also looking very solid. Or I could take this pawn. Hmm. If I take this pawn, there's queen f3. Just slightly unpleasant. Yeah, I probably just trade queens and, and grind the ending. Maybe invade with a rook if king e6. Yeah, this structure is something that you will sometimes see in these Italian lines, like when the play transitions into the end game. It's a, the big benefit of having the pawn in a5 against the pawn in a6. Um, let's play this. Then b7 is fixed. e4 is a good practical decision. Like sacking a pawn, but trying to at least create some source of counterplay. Um, I'm tempted to go for d4, but I should probably just take. And I could, I guess I could take on h5 and then c5. And this is defended, this is defended. Trying to figure out how to advance my kingside pawns. Maybe h3. Let's play h4. There's actually a tactic of rook g6 I could take on c6. Oh, let's be careful. King f3, rook takes. Tricky, tricky. Bring the thing back. Always got to be careful when knights are still on the board. King d4, knight f3. Yeah, 
Yeah, let's speed things up. Oops. Okay. I felt a little bit slow there. Got down to four seconds. Good game. Yeah, it's one of these like tense Italian battles, at least from the opening. I think we, we strayed away from theory probably pretty early. Um, yeah, I mean, I prepared this line a little bit in depth for uh, Festino Oro. In our game, uh, his pawn was in a5, and he played knight e7. With bishop e6, yeah, it's a very fine way for black to play. Queen e1. Oh, engine says, yeah, there's different playable moves. Queen e1 is one of them. Okay, there's a few questions. Uh, let's go through them one by one. Uh, what about knight e4 on move 40? Knight e4, move 40. Knight e4 is not legal. Knight e5, maybe. Maybe is what you're referring to. Yeah, knight e5 would have simplified a bit. In hindsight, it would have been probably simpler. I thought my knight was better than this knight, so I, I wanted to keep the knight on the board. And actually, when I played h4, I saw the line rook g6, and then rook takes c6 is kind of a, a nice tactic. Because whatever it takes back, like pawn, king, or rook, knight e5 is a fork. And we trade into a winning king pawn ending. If rook takes on f or on g two, I have king f three to counterattack. So I guess it's another reason I didn't go for the knight trade. Did the engine show an exchange sack instead of wait instead of bishop e six in the opening? I don't know how black can ex can sack the exchange. Yeah, not quite seeing it. Oh, I had rook takes f6. After queen d7? Wow. I mean, this move was on my radar, but I didn't think it works because black's quick to play this and this. But somehow the engine just enjoys a long-term compensation. Yeah, this is hard to go for. Queen e7. And the knight does have f5 eventually. It's actually interesting to keep in mind that white can just sack and then use f5 square. There was a question, why do you like Italian over Scotch or Roy? I've played all uh, all openings. Recently, I've been playing Italian because um, I've been learning this line A4. It actually cuts down a lot of the, the options that you have to learn. Because at least in this move order, like if black plays this or this, white can just play D3, and then usually it transposes. And I think it's a nice weapon for... Uh, especially for faster time controls. And I played this in classical too. Um, the point is to induce eventually a6 or a5 and then trade bishops and then get the structure and into the middle game. But yeah, Scotch and Roy Lopez are also totally fine. I'll, I'll also play once in a while. Let's 
What's more valuable, the horse or the rook? It depends on the position. Usually the rook, though, but sometimes the horse. Okay, playing Mr. Jazz. Oh, another berserking game. <laughs> this time I, I, like, I wasn't even trying to click the button. Okay, so opponents rated 1556, giving me time odds. We're going into some, like, Nimzo Larson type attack thing. Yeah, D3, let's develop. I'm actually not sure if I'm supposed to take with bishop or pawn. Maybe bishop. And keep the pawn on d5. F4, wow. I mean, the first move I'm looking at is this move, and then this, and then like queen, queen h6, I think this wins material. Because then if rook g1, I take the pawn. Okay, let's go for it. And if bishop f2, I take this pawn. Yeah, not such a sequence that you see every day. Now, now there's ideas of maybe, oh, maybe not quite check, because c3. Just hoping to deflect the bishop from defending the rook. I mean, now I have c5. And the bishop's tied down to the rook. Rook g2 is off limits, and now pawn d4. Yeah, this is uh, an opening gone very wrong for white. Oh, there's a question if the, uh, if the over the board events will be streamed. The answer is almost certainly yes. Um, hoping to have some returning guest commentators. In this position, I was hoping to like orchestrate some casting queenside with checkmates, but I probably would have taken the bishop and then taken the rook and enjoyed life. Okay, moving on. Do you take opening requests? Sometimes. I mean, people are, are always welcome to request openings. Sometimes it is hard to fulfill them because with a lot of openings, opponent needs to cooperate. Madrid was really nice. I enjoyed the tournament. It was pretty exhausting. Like, yeah, by the end of it, I was like pretty burnt out. I got sick. I flew back to the US a day after the tournament. So it took some time to recover. But I was happy with overall chess. Okay, h6, g6. Let's play knight c3. I and mean, this will probably like go into a hippo type thing. Um, we'll play f4, it won't be aggressive. Actually, it's kind of funny because one of my opponents in Madrid, uh, Grandmaster Lirino Nieto, he's like known for playing this exact thing in like online blitz. I'd briefly check this for him. I remember like some F5 idea, but where is it? Play F5 right away. Maybe. Take, take. Maybe knight F3 first, but I want the queen to come to G4. I could also possibly go for H4. And then f5. 
Actually, let's play Bishop D3 first. Realizing I may have hung a pawn there. <laughs> Not the cleanest opening. Play Bishop E3. I still want to go for F5. A gamma the pawn. This is an intentional gambit. If takes, takes, I lose g2, but then the king side opens. Probably eventually castle queen side, maybe use e file. e5, wow. I could play d5. Could also maybe take. I'd rather try and keep the position open. Uh, I'm calculating takes, takes, and then knight f3, bishop g3, king f1. The idea of knight e2. Okay, let's go for it. Yeah, it might be giving away casting rights. But the point is, this bishop is... It's entered the wrong neighborhood. Hopefully get tempo on it. Okay, there's f6 here. And there's also just knight g3. Which almost traps the bishop. There's bishop d6, e5, bishop c5. Oh, there's also bishop takes f3 in that line. Hmm. I have other options. Like I'm looking at bishop d4. And then just put the bishop on f6. I'm going to go for this. If black castles, I play bishop f6. And then even if black doesn't castle. It seems like black is like nearly paralyzed here. So it's so hard to remove the bishop. d5 mm. and there's e5 my g5 comes to mind I still have this move too I think d5 is like a decent try I think, yeah, I think I just take. And like takes, takes, queen takes, and then queen e2. Use the e file. Now I'm threatening mate. I'm also threatening bishop e4. Black attempts to defend both threats. But bishop e4, I think. I think still wins material because once I take the knight's going to be pinned and if the queen takes then I mate and I'm going to win the rook or yeah or checkmate okay yeah kind of messy there um there was a moment black could have taken the pawn I mean, well it's still probably like better objectively yeah it's like, Black's wasted so many tempies and moving pawns. Wait, I was worse at one point. Wait, first of all, okay, if Black takes the pawn uh, in this position. Oh, this is actually, yeah, this is playable for Black. But how was I worse? Wow. I assume the knight was pinned, but black could have taken with a knight. Setting up knight e3 to fork. And white's just losing material, right? Because takes knight e3, king e2 takes. Yeah, black wins a piece. Like takes. Okay, maybe I have a discovery in the end, but. 
I can't win back anything. Bishop takes a6 versus king c8. Wow. Imagine if my opponent just like found that and beat me from such an opening. Okay, moving on. Yeah, look at the look at the accuracy. 68%. Okay. Moving on. Still undefeated. Yeah, every win is a new peak rating. 2711. Yeah, I'll only berserk if my opponent berserks. Even though there's been two games where my opponent berserked and I didn't berserk back. The timing is off. Okay. Playing Blunder or Rook? Who's playing the Polish opening? Uh, against the Polish, usually it's good just to trade B pawn for E pawn, even though usually in the opening, center pawns are more valuable. In this sequence, black is just uh, developing quicker. Knight C6 will come with tempo. Sometimes Rook E8 will come with tempo. And then usually black can expand. I mean, white still gets a playable position. Wondering about this move, queen g6. Trying to prevent the bishop from developing. I mean, the normal move is to play d5 and okay, bishop e2, white's going to castle. I'm trying to figure out, like, queen g6, knight e5. Maybe I have, like, queen b6 to b2. I'm going to start with this. And if white wants to play this, then it seems like white's going to have to take some time. Then maybe I just move the queen and then eventually kick away the knight. Okay. Go for d5. White could also maybe consider bishop d3 and sack the pawn. No, e5 is played. Yeah, maybe this wasn't the best thing to go for. Queen g5, h4. Queen b6. I mean, queen b6, queen b3. I'll just sidestep the queen. Yeah, now I'm no longer pressuring g2, so the bishop develops. It's still okay though. I have the bishop here. Offering the trade of knights. I mean, c6. Looking for counterattacks. But let's just go for c6. Multi-purpose, defending the pawn, also preparing this. White will likely respond with this. Hmm. Yeah, let's start with this. Expecting g3. I'd like to get the h-pawn rolling. Bishop h3 comes to mind, but then bishop g2. I'm going to go for queen g5. If white plays h4, then the, the king side softens a little bit. G3 is a bit uh, softer. I'm not sure if I'm actually ready to play this because bishop takes h5. So the plan might be to play g6 and h5. And 
White is probably having ideas of pushing one of these pawns. But I have the bishop here, so if there's a pawn break and we trade, then bishops probably prefer the open position. White does get some initiative. Knight takes, knight takes. Don't think I want to allow this move. Kind of wondering about this. Hmm. There's also this move, which is kind of random, but... It's interesting. I guess there's h4. Which spoils my fun. Yeah, what do I do actually? Because takes takes f6 is a bit vulnerable. Why do I have to play this move? Hmm. And bishop a5. Okay, I'm going to play this move. It's not what I want. I think I just underestimated this. I have f6. Okay, at least we can maybe open the f-file. Yeah, if the f-file opens, then... I mean, this is a big source of potential attack for black. Take with rook or queen? Probably rook. Yeah, White's playing quite quickly. Hasn't blundered a rook yet. F4 makes some sense. F4 is actually a good move. Because this thing is coming. I mean, I have three, I might have to just trade off. I don't think I can afford to allow knight coming to e5. And the downside is if we go into opposite color bishop ending, I'm probably not better. It might be worse. Unless I can somehow like control the e-file. Queen d3 is a good move. I play this move. My opponent's doing a great job of like, yeah, pressuring me on time. Built up a nice position too. Ninety five is coming. Take, take. Just looking for ways to try and keep the position alive. That's really not what I want. At least I do control the e-file, at least temporarily. Oh, but rookie one's coming. That's really not what I want. I have like almost nothing here. I'm conceding the e-file. Okay.
There's one idea. My only hope is maybe that my opponent blunders their rook. They live up to their username. Okay, this is my one idea is to try and... Uh, I might even trade, like, rookie seven, take, take. Let's go for it. It's so committal. I think I win a pawn if we trade rook, so... Oh, I forgot about that move. Now I can't trade. Yeah, it likes controlling the only open file. So what's my plan now? B5, A5. That move gives me hope. The pawn's now a target. What to do? Put the bishop on b4. I have to just accept a draw. Um, well, let's play this move. Taking a big risk with the time situation. Okay. I should be winning this now.
tough game. Okay, man. Oh. Yeah, these obstacle positions can be deceiving because they're not like quite like, completely dead drawn. I got a bit careless here. Like G6 was just not a good move at all. Um, yeah, I probably have to be a bit more patient. F5 might be playable. Although F5, the issue is that White has this plan of like F4 and eventually Knight E5. So let me check the opening. Okay, maybe f5 sooner, but f5 g3? Engine finds something concrete. Wow. So if e takes f4, rook takes f4. And if takes, black sacks a rook, but has a mating attack. That's crazy. That's hard to find. Like in order to play f5, you have to see that line. Going back to this position, yeah, queen g6, maybe not the best. Like d5, so let's say d5, bishop e2, c5, okay. Or d4, c4, okay. Some lessons to take away. Yeah, the position was equal for a long time, but I didn't want to trade rooks. I was really close to trading rooks here. But rook f7 at least keeps some life in the position. And then, like this f pawn, it's potentially dangerous, but all of white's pawns are also potentially weak. Yeah, once I won a4, then, yeah, especially here, black is already like winning. Okay. Moving on, top 200, 49 minutes left. New peak rating, 27.12. Am I on the leaderboard yet? No. I think I just need to play more games. Okay, we have another King's Pawn. Are we going to see a Stafford Gambit? What do I play against this? Can I play Bishop C4? Like Bowden Kizaritsky? This is objectively dubious, but it's somewhat of a reverse Stafford Gambit. We'll see how well my opponent knows this. So it's basically a Stafford, but you're up a tempo because I already have the bishop developed. And it's a good sign my opponent's thinking here. I mean, this isn't really seen at Grandmaster level because, uh, yeah, the, the opening should be refuted. I think the engine will give like minus 0.8. That's a welcome sign. F6 is the best move. With C6, I probably have to take on E5. At least we have some, some position that's equal material. I'm actually wondering if I can castle. If takes, takes, takes. This is probably a bit more sound. How's it going? Ash, no one. Happy 18 months. I could castle here. P5. 
probably doesn't change much. Like Bishop d6 is coming. Let's castle. Oh no, my knight. I'm trying to figure out like if after bishop d6 I can do something other than knight f3. Like queen h5 maybe Good luck. and g6. Thank you, Imbus. If I play knight f3, bishop g4. Oh, but then maybe queen e1. Okay, we'll be solid. Or even rookie one. I think queen e1 to get out of the pin, but with rookie one, it's not a not pleasant for block to actually block the check. Oh, I don't have a setup command or a specs command. Um, if you have questions about what I'm using, I think I have a mic command. I'm using the Shure MV7. So we see Bishop G4. So if I play Rook E1, I'm actually wondering about King F8. King F8, Queen E2, threatening mate, but then Knight D7. So rook e1, king f8. Yeah, I don't want to have to like play bishop e2. But let's say queen e1 bishop or queen e1 king f8. I would have bishop g5 there. Queen e6, we trade. Let's go for this. Pretty rare that you see the queen move to e1 in such a position, like trapping in the own rook. But the point is to get out of the pin. And if black plays bishop e7, I have knight e5. And then maybe eventually f4 and the rook can have some life. And then if king f8, it's good that the knight is not pinned because there is uh, bishop g5. Two years ago, I just knew how the pieces moved. Ooh. Now I've reached 2,100 oh, rapid hey, on let's leeches, go. and I learned a lot from you. So thanks, Eric, and here's to another year. That's nice also, to hear. quack smile. Welcome back to Kazen. Happy two years. That's really impressive improvement, actually. In two years to 2,100. On that pace, maybe, yeah, one more year to get to 3,000. Thousand points a year. What happened to the beard? I shaved it. It's uh yeah, it's very hot in St. Louis. So it was becoming uncomfortable. I know a lot of people wanted me to keep it, but maybe it'll come back someday. Okay, I have Bishop G five or ninety five. If I play bishop g5 first, there's queen, queen e6, take on e7. I think I like that better. Just calculating, okay, there's also this move. And I have this. And there's also bishop e7 first. Bishop e7, queen e7, knight e5, bishop e6, f4. I think it's very similar. I'll start by taking. Yeah, there's a nice initiative here. Like, my initiative started, I guess, when I played queen e1. Like, every move was a threat. What did you eat in Madrid? Um had a decent amount of like Spanish food. There's a really good Indian restaurant, like pretty close to the chess club. I went there like three times. 
the owner like always gave me more than what I ordered, like extra naan, extra rice. There was a cafe called Monkey Coffee I went to like every day. Had some iced lattes, some bagels there. F5. F5 looks nice, but Bishop Retreats. Oh, then F6 maybe? Yeah, that looks pretty good. I was close to starting with Queen G3, but it's still uh, still some initiative for white. I did have some uh, Iberian ham. Levy really liked it. Had some, yeah, I had some Spanish meals with Levy and the U.S. crowd. Queen c5, king h1. I mean, with a pawn on f6 combined with this, 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 and this, it's looking real good. Threatening some force mates. It might already be force mates. I guess, yeah, maybe there's queen f8 to try and survive. But now... Now the only move to delay made is to play queen g1. Hope I take with rook and then place a knight on f2 for checkmate. If only it were bug house. Yeah, actually, if this were like bug house or crazy house and black had rook and knight, they could place a rook on g1, take and then place a knight on f2. But thankfully, this is just chess. So... Okay, clean game. Yeah, the um, the engine will say this opening is slightly dubious. Reverse staff or gambit, also known as a Bowden Kizaritsky. The refutation is to play f6. c6 is equal. Um, actually, c6 is probably like a bit easier to uh, to understand because black is pretty much guaranteed to play d5. Um. After f6, the position can get very tricky for both sides. Because there's an h4 threatening this, and then black has to play g6, and then f4. But black has like enough resources to defend queen e7, apparently. I don't know why black resigned. Oh, mate was unstoppable. Yeah, queen g1 maybe. Uh, maybe was almost checkmate, but not quite. I think black, yeah, black should have tried like moving the rook to set up this. Hopefully I would have found like knight takes f7. Bishop takes g6 apparently too. Yeah, such a position is ripe for tactics. So haven't really been gaining too much rating. Um, probably gaining like fractions of points with these games up to 27, 12.59. Are you allowed to place a piece with check and bug house? Uh, yes, at least the rules I play like an American bug house, maybe in other countries, there's slightly different rules. Oh, let's play this line, bishop g4. That's what I played in round five in Madrid. I recorded the recap video yesterday. Um, still have to edit it. I have six. Bishop e7. Are there any like nuances here? Maybe knight e7 first. This is a new opening for me, so still like kind of getting used to the move order. There's c6. Queen e1, so interesting. Okay, let's play bishop e7. Oh, 
I'll just take and take. I could also just castle. It's the second game in a row we're seeing the queen go to e1 with a rook on f1. I mean, am I scared of 95? Probably not so much. All right, let's go for this. Did I win round five? I have to edit the recap today and then post it and then you'll see. Um, I mean, my Twitch channel was live for every round of Madrid, so maybe some people tuned in for the guest commentary. C4. Now I'm dreaming of this and this. We could trade a bit. Okay, I'm going to play Queen B6. So I'm threatening to take and take. I'm also trying to tie down the bishop to defending the pawn. And bishop e3 also drops a knight. White might be able to get away with takes. Never mind. C5, I should have maybe seen coming. I have queen a6. Maybe eventually b6. Yeah, this is a double-edged move. So on one hand, white is gaining space, gets initiative, but the d-pawn is backwards, it can't move forwards, and it can't be defended by a pawn. So the plan is to use the d-file, maybe eventually like double up rooks. Oh, I should probably update the announcement command. We Yeah, the upcoming command is more relevant. Upcoming command will share my next two chess tournaments. Is there anyone watching that's going to be in Buell or Trondheim? Because they are open events. Buell is mid-July. Trondheim is August. Or maybe anyone like considering playing these events or just stopping by. Oh, got one person who lives in Bern will visit Buell. Wait, G Spates was in Madrid, really? Got to meet a lot of uh, a lot of chess fans in Madrid. A lot of people came to stop by the tournament. I take the problem with taking is, yeah, White well, gets a bishop pair. And there's takes, there's takes, or there's retreating. I'll just retreat. I mean, I attack the knight. White does have to be careful of bishop d3 ideas. Oh, couldn't quite reach that part of town. Yeah, unfortunately in Madrid, I, I didn't really have time for any sort of like official meetup. Got really wrapped up with just playing and Wait, am I winning a pawn here? If I take... Okay, I can't take here because takes here. If I take here, there's this move, takes. But that looks good. Yeah, let's go for this. If white takes on e5 first, I just take... I'll win c5 in the end. Or even h3 and then c5. Yeah, I should probably just take here first. If the queen were on d1, there'd be queen h5 and... Oh, but then queen takes f1, never mind. Okay, so I'm basically winning two pawns. White's going to try and generate some counterplay. We might see queen e4, yeah. So maybe I can, I can start with this. 
and then prepare queen d3. Like if rook h1, queen d3 is a nice like defensive, also attacking resource. It defends the pawn through x-ray vision. Yeah, white's keeping queens on the board. I mean, everything's defended. I'm thinking queen c2. Always got to be careful, such moves. Queen can't be deflected. I'm threatening f2. Bishop e3 is not really possible because I take. Why are you playing these tournaments? Uh, they seem like they're in really nice places. Now, I was in Buell last year. I had a really nice time. I enjoyed all the side events. Um, and I'm motivated to play uh, like more high-level classical chess. I feel like at least the last tournament my chess was in, in pretty good form. On g4. So that does defend f2. Queen e4, f3. Let's start with queen e4. Because if f3, I have queen e2. Is chess your full-time job? Um, I'm not really a professional player, but I guess I, I'm i a professional content creator. There's kind of different, different aspects to what I do. But yeah, educator, content creator is probably how I describe it to most people. Rook d3. Gambitier. Yeah, very often, like international tournaments will provide conditions to uh, for me to play in them. So, like usually, accommodation is covered. Sometimes food, sometimes a travel stipend. Um, that's a nice thing about, uh, especially about like European tournaments, is usually they have. Like good conditions. Yeah, I'm not actively coaching these days. I used to coach uh, for a few years. We do have the coach command. Okay, um, yeah, pretty smooth game. I mean, White played a solid opening, and I kind of had to just also be solid and be patient. Queen b6 was mainly intuitive. Uh, C5 was yeah probably a good response. And at some point, white just went wrong. Yeah, knight E5 thing just led to the center crumbling a bit. Um, but this line was interesting. Like, if white takes here, I think I was going to just take with bishop. Even though the engine says takes with pawn is stronger. I was looking at takes and then here, threatening this and this. Don't fully understand. Bishop e3 is the top move? How does it make any sense? Oh, wow. Queen b4. And if I take on f1, my queen is stuck. Queen b6. Wow. Such a funny engine line. C takes b6. So black is up to exchange, but... White has a pawn on a7, c5 runs into a3. Crazy engine line. Hmm. Okay, let's move on. 20, less than 25 minutes left. Top 100. Definitely not fighting for first. I did join about two and a half hours late. 
Thank you, mating threats. Happy oh, no, eight months. Prime. Happy. Oh yeah, happy prime time. Okay, I've been playing like all E4 today. Taking a break from the London opening. I mean, basically, I'm playing my uh, my Madrid repertoire. Probably have to work on a new repertoire for Beal. Bishop e7. Bishop e7. What do we call this? Hungarian? I could play d4. Let's stay with a more traditional Italian. Can I gift my prime sub to someone? I guess you can give it to another streamer, but you can't give it to like another viewer in chat, I don't think. So going for this night walk, probably more common to do this night maneuver after castling. But sometimes you can do it before castling. Thank you, Johnny Chess and L. Another first time prime. So one benefit of having the knight here is if the bishop drops back, I get the bishop pair. Here, black drops back to e6. Yeah, I'll just be solid. Black is playing solid too. You see three. So with bishop a4, if black plays c6 and b4 almost traps the knight, there would be b5. b5 right away, okay. So maybe I lost a tempo there. And black is playing solidly still. d4 maybe. Maybe I just castle first. Castling, there's g5. Looking at a4 as well. Calculating b4, d4. Hmm. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this transformation. Nice shish kebab. I mean, d4. Ideally, I should castle first, but how does Bach respond to d4? Maybe we'll find out soon. I'm threatening d5. Forking, but also attacking the pinned knight. Now I can take with knight. I think white's just winning material. Like the pin is just too strong. And take the queen. I don't see how black is getting much compensation here. Take the knight. There was an attempt to play knight c2. Now castle. So it's queen for bishop. Yeah, I mean, these, these sort of positions, they still require uh, some alertness, awakeness. 
to make sure I don't fall asleep. Probably want to attack. I mean, I have a queen to attack with, and black doesn't have a queen to defend with. Yeah, already some pressure points. Black defending with a minor pieces. So complete development, maybe look to trade off the bishop. Oh no, your beard. Oh no. But oh yes, my discombobulated badger. How's it going? Happy, happy half a year. I was surprised like how many nice comments there were about the beard. Like only a handful said I looked like a hobo, but like they were mostly positive. A few said that I looked like Zelensky. I could take on g7 and then play f4, but let's keep the knights running f4, f5. Um, now it doesn't win material. Okay, I'll play very positionally. Rook a3, preparing the double up. Target the weak pawn. Save the knight. Maybe this move to eventually go to e3. Yeah, I probably had like more concrete tactics when, like, instead of knight d4, I could have done things followed by f4, f5. But these positions, I mean, there's there's multiple ways to win. My plan is to just be calm and target the weak pawns. Yeah, hopefully we have time for one more game after this one. Yeah, this is multi-purpose. Of ideas in knight d5 or f5. I'm also supporting c4 to remove the bishop from defending the a pawn. If I can win the a pawn, then yeah, the d pawn will be next. Okay, where is my mate? Rook a8. Yeah, let's start with rook a8. If knight of fate, I probably go for knight f5. With this, I go for this. A threatening maiden one. If rook takes h4 defending, then I have knight f5 attacking. Still knight f5. Okay. Moving up. Oh, hey, it's Camel Clutcher. One of the mods of the channel. Long time mod. I don't think we'll end up playing, though.
so 27 13.52 yeah this might be the last game of the tournament for me maybe of the stream playing dwight dance oh camel clutcher is in the chat says we want the beard back might have to wait until november the no shave november But it's good to know, like, it only takes a couple weeks to kind of grow it out. Um, I had this like in Smirin in uh, Blitzterm in, in Fujaira. I think Smirin played some. Something like this. I think of C4, I just play an F3. I had this recently too in Title Tuesday. Against a uh, strong candidate master. Play Queen D2. And this resembles some Rus Limo. I made the discovery the other day that like there's cases where white can castle queen side in these lines. And this might be one case where I could maybe even start with bishop h6. And then castle and attack. Ooh. Okay, I'll take. Yeah, if I castle queenside, like, it's really that risky. King b1, black could try and bond storm. Castle b5, but then I take on f5. Let's go for it. No Grand Prix. I mean, this is basically a Grand Prix. And it's one version of the Grand Prix. Uh, maybe the more common Grand Prix is F4. But against Knight C6, I like to go for the trade and then, then go for a Grand Prix setup. So maybe it's a little bit different. But it still leads to a lot of like similar attacking ideas. Few moves come to mind. I mean, h4 takes and queen e3 are my candidate moves. Knight g5 as well. Queen e3. I mean, it hits a pawn and sets up this move. What does Bach do? Queen d6, maybe. Well, queen d6, I play e5. I'm going to go for this. I just don't see how black can like easily respond to this threat. Maybe b6, but that allows takes and then takes and then check. Some initiative for white. Yeah, b6 comes quickly. Also consider this. F four might be coming though. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go for this. I'm thinking after king g8, I play h4. Because black can't really remove my queen right away. h5 is likely to come. 
I mean, there might be this move. Mm. Mm, yeah, maybe I should not have allowed that. Rookie one. Uh, some small regrets. Rookie eight is coming. Taking only helps black. Thank you, Stellar Chess. I appreciate the raid. If you're just joining, I got myself into a pickle. Like, it looks good for white, but... Yeah, this is a very strong move. I might just have to trade into the endgame. Like, takes. Queen takes. Trade further. Maybe white's still slightly better. It's not at all what I wanted. But rookie eight's a threat, and I don't think I can afford... Can I afford the double pawn, so? Okay, let's calculate. h5. Rook e8. Queen g3. Takes, takes. Queen. Maybe it's playable. A prospect of the h-file opening. It looks risky, though. Queen d5, c4. I'm going to go for it. Initially, I just, like, I stopped calculating after rookie 8 and seeing that my queen's driven away from supporting the knight. Now I'm realizing that, like, this might just be really bad for white. It's going to get sharp. I mean, it's still okay. Oh, I think uh, I think this person was in chat earlier, actually. Like this name looks familiar. I think they they subbed maybe with Prime, like many minutes ago. Member saying thank you to Dwight. There's a good chance this game won't count for the tournament. Five and a half minutes left. I didn't play knight e4 because rook e8. There were some knight e3 ideas or queen f6 to follow. Okay, making up some time deficits. I was really expecting rook f8, or uh, rook fe8. With this, I could start by taking. Also take on d5 first, takes, 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 takes. Anything there? g4. I went a pawn? I might win a pawn. There's bishop takes though. Uh, if I take your first, let's take your first. Let's see what uh, opponent takes back with. Because yeah, now if I take, 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 feels equal. Ninety four. Take, take. There's also rookie one here.
The rookie one looks playable. Keep some tension. With this move, I'm giving my opponent a lot of options. So I'm trying to level the time a bit. Down about a minute and a half. But this is one of these moves, like it's um it's natural to play because the rook was the one piece not doing much. I think I take with pawn now. I mean, this setup is decent. Black can't really exploit these pawns. There is queen f7, but I'll have ways to deal with that. If takes takes, I hit c6. Ooh. I can't take the rook. Okay, I probably have to take the queen. We trade. Ooh. Bishop comes to e8. I don't mind this. Knight versus bishop. Play c4. There's ninety five. Doesn't work. King e three. Start with king e three. This pawn should be poisonous because c four. Yeah, I really gotta move more quickly. C4. Have A4 too. B5, Rook B1, and B4. B4, C4. I'm trying to create like some long term weaknesses in box structure. If takes, I play uh, Rook A1. And that looks really good for white. Because I win back the pawn and then probably the other pawn. And now all the pawns are fixed. It's not easy for the bishop to actually target my pawns on light squares. It's both c2 and a4 are inaccessible for the bishop. And now it's a matter of probably like repositioning my knight and rook. Like the rook would like to somehow get to the fifth rank. The knight maybe to b3. Oh, that's annoying. Can I avoid the trade? I have knight g1. Might be the only move. But at that point, I probably just allow the trade. And do I take with king or pawn? Probably king. I'll be threatening rook h5. Wait, so takes takes. That's also the question. Okay, never mind. Play this now. Down 50 seconds. Tournament's officially over. This game still counts for rating, though. Okay, a5 is impossible to defend. A6. 
C6 attacked. Probably not so interested in C6. Like, I, mean, I just want to start pushing the A-pawn. And probably the rook's going to have to be passive and then can eventually win this pawn. Yeah, king d6, d4, I lose c2, I win b4. And it was actually a mating idea to play rook b7, threatening maiden 1. Black defense. Any other mating ideas? And the king's completely stuck. So close to mate. Check, check. The king e4 first. Threading mate in three. The mate in three thread is actually a cool sequence. Yeah, the, the reason why I play king e4 is to take away the square. So after king e6, knight e8, king d6, c5 will be checkmate. Okay. Yeah, nice meeting idea. Got a Rosen trophy for that. Gained two points. Um, good fight. Yeah, my opponent probably got a very fine position. Um... But yeah, even in, in the end game, like white can still kind of try and grind things down with these pawns. I'm not sure if bishop takes f3 would have saved black. Like here, I was kind of getting takes, takes, and then it's hard to stop rook h5. Because if rook e5, I have rook h6. That's move bishop g4. Uh, maybe to eventually take the knight. So apparently white was like doing really well. Uh, the opening strategy worked with casting queenside. But then I didn't find the best path forward. Queen e3 was fine. Even stronger was h4 immediately. Oh, d4 I did not consider. d4 is one of these moves that's like hard to consider, but once you see it, it does look nice to try to open the d-file or just take over the center. I proceeded to kind of give away my whole advantage. My d5 was very strong. There was a question about why I didn't play ninety four. I think in this position. Um, but yeah, there's issues with my knights like not being defended enough. Like, I think during the game I was scared of this, but even takes is is playable. So 
So, um, that's a tournament. Got the nice little jingle there. Congratulations, 10 times better. Wow, nice checkmate sequence. Clapping, your opponent played really well. Here's a joke. What do you call a pig that does karate? Um, a pork chop. Pork chop? <laughs> Maybe. Welcome back, Booty Snatcher. Okay, I think I'll wrap it up there. I uh, I managed to stay clean. Had some good fights. Final rating is 27.15. I didn't play enough games to like lower my deviation to appear on the leaderboard. Need to get my deviation below 75. And can we see the leaderboard though? If I play enough games and maintain my rating, I'd be I'd be number 14 on each house. So yeah, maybe I'll do some more rapid in the coming days and weeks. Anyway, um yeah, big thanks to everyone tuning in. Stay tuned for more chess content. I do appreciate all the good vibes.